There are two things you're going to want to do before you put biochar into your soil. Otherwise, you may get negative results. We're going to cover that on today's video. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. Over the last two years, I've seen a big uptick in interest about biochar. It's a way to sequester carbon, give your soil an incredibly dense habitat for microbes, and give your soil a greater ability to store nutrients and feed those nutrients to plants when the plants need them. But if you don't understand the properties of biochar, specifically its negative electrical charge, then you might be disappointed in how your garden performs for one or maybe two growing seasons after you use it. So let's just reset and go over what biochar is. And this video here is a great way to get a good biochar 101 lesson. But if you don't wanna switch videos right now, I'll just give you a quick overview and you can see the link in the description. Biochar is organic matter, typically wood and manures, organic waste for the most part, that's essentially burnt in an oxygen-starved environment. This process is called pyrolysis, and what it does is it basically off-gasses the volatile organic matter uh, in that organic waste, but it preserves most of the carbon, leaving you with 80% or 90% uh, pure carbon with a massive amount of nooks and crannies that give you an absolutely ridiculous amount of surface area uh, in that biochar that microbes can inhabit. All right, that was a mouthful. So think of biochar like a coral reef where microbes can hide out and flourish. So how massive of a surface area are we talking about? Well, just one gram of biochar, like high quality biochar, like the kind we sell, has as much surface area as two full-size basketball courts. But raw biochar also has a negative charge, and that negative charge can be the source of negative results in your garden. So before you use biochar, it's a great idea to first charge and inoculate your biochar. Let's talk about inoculation first. When that biochar gets uh, produced, it's been subjected to temperatures between 500 and 900 degrees Fahrenheit in most cases. So trust me when I say that there's absolutely nothing living in that biochar when it comes out of the kiln. But we mentioned that biochar is an incredible habitat for microbes. So we're doing ourselves a favor if we reintroduce microbes in the form of compost or worm castings to it before we use it. Compost, and especially worm castings, is so dense with microbes and plentiful organic matter to feed those microbes that we can easily populate this biochar with a thriving microbe population. So now that we've inoculated the biochar, we now need to charge it. But why do we need to do that? We'll get to that in a second, but first, if you're liking this video and want me to make more of them, please like it, hit subscribe, and click that little bell to let you know every time we release a new video. All right, back to charging and why we need to do it. So most nutrients are positively charged, meaning that they will be attracted to the negatively charged biochar and won't be available for uptake by the plants. So the biochar forms what I like to call a semi-committed relationship with the nutrients in the soil until a new positively charged dance partner comes along. And that's exactly what happens when plants need nutrients. And this part's kind of cool. When the plant needs nutrients, it consumes some of its own carbohydrates and releases carbon dioxide into the soil. When that carbon dioxide comes into contact with water, it turns into carbonic acid, which breaks down further into a bicarbonate and a proton, which is a positively charged ion. Once that proton encounters charged biochar in that semi-committed relationship with the nutrient, the biochar gets a little tired of its current dance partner, which remember is the positively charged nutrient, and it shacks up with the hot new proton in the soil. That nutrient is now a swing and single again and is available to be taken up by the plant that needs it. This is called cation exchange, so it shouldn't surprise you that biochar increases cation exchange capacity, or CEC, in the soil. So how can you efficiently charge biochar so it doesn't rob your plants of nutrients? Well, thankfully, that same compost or worm casting you use to inoculate that biochar also has some nutrients that will be attracted to the biochar to help even out that negative charge in the soil. And that's exactly what we're doing with our inoculated bulk biochar that we mixed in about an 80 to 20 ratio with our worm castings, that's by volume, and this provides the microbes to inoculate the char and a decent amount of the nitrogen and other nutrients to charge the biochar as well. Another method available to all of us is to literally pee on our biochar. Our urine has a lot of urea, which is the primary nitrogenous substance in our pee, also happens to be a very common fertilizer. A more conventional method to both inoculate and charge our biochar, and you can probably do this a little easier at scale than you can with pee, might be to soak our biochar in worm castings tea or compost tea and maybe even add a high nitrogen organic supplement like feather meal to the solution to boost the plant available nitrogen even further. Okay guys, hope this was helpful. Even though this is a worm channel, I love venturing outside my comfort zone and learning about some other soil amendments that can complement that worm poop in our soil. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.